Good morning, everyone, and welcome, Sherman Church. Hear the call to worship. A time is coming when you will worship, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Out of the depths, we cry to you, O God, Lord, hear our voices. Remember the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, though he was rich, for our sakes became poor, so that through his poverty we might become rich. Let God's people put all their hope in the Lord, for with God there is faithful love, and in the Lord is plenteous redemption. Let our worship be in sincerity and truth. Let us pray. Living, loving, and faithful God, the God in whom we live and move and have our being, the God who is made known to us in our Lord Jesus Christ, bless us, one and all, as we wait on you this day. Lord, remove from our minds and our hearts whatever impediments hinder worship or dampen our joy. Increase within us that holy longing for closeness with you which can open our lives to fuller delight and to a deeper commitment. May our hymns, our prayers, our searching thoughts and our hearing and meditation on scripture be acceptable in your sight and may you use it to edify our faith by you with you and for you may our lives proclaim your praise we ask this in the name of jesus our savior who taught us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. in our hymnals to hymn number 77 hymn number 77 praise to the lord the almighty the king of creation and you can hum along with the music hymn 77 time for our mission moment.
Jesus Christ was beaten, mocked and misunderstood, he endured the cross and despised the shame. Though the King of Kings, he was persecuted and died for our sake. In this world we will face tribulation, but you promise you'll be right here with us. And he said to his followers, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. And to this day, all over the world, they still do. Nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus. If our God is for us, we are not alone. But Jesus promised more that those who suffer for his name's sake would not be forgotten, not by God, and not by the family of God. The Voice of the Martyrs was founded by a persecuted Christian as well. Richard Wormbrand reached out for Christ to the Nazis in the early 1940s when they came into his native Romania. He felt a calling to reach out to atheists for Christ. He prayed for opportunities to share Christ with the Russians as well, and when the Soviet communists entered into Romania in 1944, they came right to his doorstep. Richard boldly witnessed to them as well. And just as Jesus promised, they hated him for it. He was arrested and sent to prison for a total of 14 years, often in solitary confinement, often tortured. Through it all, he held on to his love for God and committed to witness for Christ in word and deed even to his torturers. In 1967, Richard, now free from jail and out of Romania, founded an organization committed to sharing the stories of others who, like him, were being jailed, persecuted, tortured, or killed for their faith. He often quoted Hebrews 13.3, Remember those in prison as if you were in prison with them. That organization today is operating in 68 countries around the world, in regions that are dangerous, in countries that are restricted, reaching out through persecution response, through Bible distribution, and through frontline ministry. That organization is committed to stand with their persecuted family by saying, we will not let them suffer in silence. We will not let them serve alone. From the love of Jesus, if our God is for us, we are not That organization, the voice of the martyrs. We will share their stories. We will mobilize the body of Christ to stand together with our brothers and sisters who face persecution wherever it happens. We will serve our persecuted family through practical and spiritual assistance. And we will carry on the mission of the one who called us, Jesus Christ, who said go and make disciples of all nations, no matter the cost. Not only you've heard about the voice of the martyrs and how they came into existence, it should be clear that their main uh, objective is to help Christians and others who have been persecuted. Uh, you think persecution of the early church was bad, but actually there are more people being persecuted now than then. It is illegal to preach the gospel in over 53 countries in the world. There's about one third of the world. You cannot legally preach Christ. <clears throat> the voice of the martyrs goes out and helps people who have made that commitment to spread the word of God and may have been imprisoned or beaten or killed or whatever for their witness. They provide uh, legal help to people who are in prison. They provide medical help to people who have been seriously injured. Uh, they provide housing for people whose houses have been burned down or have to move. And most important, they provide spiritual help for the families 
and for the people being persecuted. Uh, persecution is typically like several kinds of countries. The first kind is officially atheist countries where they don't want Christ to be preached at all. This is like North Korea and China who has really stepped up uh, the persecution of Christians. Uh, you have countries where it's uh, technically legal, but there are groups within the country, uh, typically countries who want to go out and establish their own religion, either Muslim countries or actually in India where they want to establish the Hindu religion. So they tend to persecute Christians. Another area is countries who uh, are ostensibly free religion, but with its groups within the country that oppress people. And this is like Nigeria, where you have half Christian, half Muslim. Uh, even in places as close as Mexico, in the southern Mexico, you have a lot of persecution. <clears throat> and in the United States, persecution is increasing. Uh, the church's vandalism has been increasing every year for quite a while. <clears throat> what can you do about it? <clears throat> Voice of the Waters asks you to do several things. One, pray. Uh, if you can go on their website, you can find people who are being persecuted. If you, they touch you, pray for them. Uh, they have several websites where you can do that. Uh, second thing you can do is to write letters uh, to people and give them encouragement. And we thank you for doing that. We've done that in the past. There's scripture goes out. There's two scriptures that really speak to this. One of them mentioned about if somebody is bound, all other Christians should be bound with them <clears throat> in Hebrews. And in 1 Corinthians says, if one person suffers, we should all suffer together. So we ask you to help go out and support other Christians who are being persecuted for their faith here in the United States and abroad. And thank you very much for doing that. And I hope you'll look at their website and see if you want to pray for somebody specifically. Thank you. Good morning and <clears throat> good morning and welcome. Um, this is, um, as you see, our live stream service. We're so happy to be here together again. Um, just a note, Jen Bundy's uh, children's message and all the sermons since last year can be found on the sermons and services tab at, the, um, at, at our website, shermanchurch.org. Um, and just a couple of notes, Tuesday Bible study continues at 6.30 at Google Meet with a study of the 12 disciples of Jesus. And anybody who wants to can just hop on board. Um, so that's um, Tuesday, two days from now, 6.30, and, and please uh, feel welcome. Um, Thursday prayer in the parlor continues each week in your home. So if you have a prayer concern, um, please submit your request on the church website under the prayer tab and we as a church will be praying for you but that's another um ministry that feel free to hop on if you haven't explored any of these google meets or meetings um you're more than welcome hop on tuesday hop on thursday um, and as charlie mentioned the um, voice of the martyr there's um the uh, collection plate in the back um, there's also um, their website, as noted in the bulletin, there's ways to um, learn about that mission and, and contribute in different ways. So, um, and just a, a little final note, the um, daily devotions, our daily bread, it, they're in, but I don't, I don't think that they're here quite yet, so they'll be here next week, but, um, oh, they are? Okay. Ed says they are, so grab one on the on the way out and um, let us know if you need one. It, they're great little, you're familiar with them, devotionals, uh, just beautiful pocket size um, inspirations and, and truths. Um, so welcome, thank you and welcome. Good morning. 
This is the time of our service where we uh, lift up our prayers to God. We can do that in our hearts, of course, and he hears us, but we also like an opportunity to hear what's going on in the area and in our lives and with people that we know and love. So if, if you feel led to um, say it out loud, we would love to hear it and be able to join in the prayer with you. And thank you for your prayer today, Jatesh. It was really, really beautiful and very much appropriate and encompassing. So I will open and close and um, I'll just start out with, Lord, you said, if we abide in you and your and your words abide in us we can ask whatever we wish and it will be done for us so we thank you for that promise please hear the prayers of your people Thank you for family that could celebrate Lynn's mom's birthday. Speedy recovery for Carol. Prayers for the family that are caring for her. Thank you for apparent resolution of the cancer for Charlie's brother-in-law and ease of breathing and healing for Mary. Lord, I lift up um, Ken's mom, Joan. Uh, she has become much weaker with the Parkinson's over the last few weeks. Um, she's pretty much unable to walk at this point and requires um, pretty much 24-hour care. Um, we just ask you to um, be merciful to her, and we pray that his, her son Keith is able to come out in September to visit her. I pray for um, all the college students and all students that are going back to school soon, whether remotely or in person or a combination of both. I just pray that it is successful and fulfilling and enriching for them on many, many ways and that they are able to proceed through the semester safely. Father, we worship you and we praise you. Jesus, we ask you to intercede on our behalf with the Father and are confident in receiving all that is in accordance with his will. Holy Spirit, thank you for guiding us. We know that we are to be anxious about nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, we have made these petitions known to you. And your peace, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.
Good morning. morning. Please rise for the reading of the scripture. Today's Old Testament reading is from Nehemiah 8. You can follow it in your Pew Bible on page 479. When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people assembled as one man in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a high high wooden platform built for the occasion. Beside him on his right stood Mattathia, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hilkath, and Messiah, and on his left were Pediah, Mishael, Malkajah, Hashem, Hashbedaniah, Zechariah, and Meshulam. Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them, and as he opened it, the people all stood up. Ezra prayed the, praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. The Levites, Jeshua, Bani, Serebiah, Jamin, Akub, Shabbatai, Hodiah, Messiah, Kelida, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, and Peliah instructed the people in the law while the people were standing there. They read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving meaning so that the people could understand what was being read. This ends the reading of the Old Testament. Today's New Testament lesson can be found in 2 Timothy, and can be found in your pew Bible on page 1179. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those with whom you have learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So ends the reading of the New Testament. Today's gospel lesson is Matthew 13 and can be found in your Bible on page 970.
Have you understood all these things, Jesus asked? Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out his out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he moved on from there. So ends the reading of the gospel. You may kindly be seated. Let's turn, on, turn in our hymnals to hymn number 659. A charge to keep, I have 659. seems her grandmother and her five-year-old grandson were taking a walk in a garden on a beautiful day in the spring, you know, surrounded by beautiful and brilliantly colored flowers that were all around. Just think, the grandmother marveled, God painted all that. God painted all of that. Yes. The five-year-old grandson agreed, and he did it with his left hand. What do you mean God did it with his left hand? The grandmother asked, somewhat puzzled by that remark. Well, the little boy replied, at Sunday school, they told us that Jesus is sitting on the right hand of God. If you didn't get it, keep thinking about Jesus sitting on. Yeah, uh, I mean, the little boy did remember that uh, the biblical truth that after Jesus ascended, he is seated at the right hand of God. But he didn't really understand what that meant, right? Uh, it's like the little boy who was being corrected for behaving badly. And his father explained to him that if this sort of behavior continued, there would be grave consequences to, you know, to face. Uh, and he asked his son, do you understand what I'm telling you? The son nodded his head and said, yes, I understand. After a minute or two, the son asked, daddy, what are consequences? We've been doing a series of sermons on the parables of Jesus in Matthew chapter 13. And we've looked at seven parables till now. So let me ask you, have you understood all these things? Now I'm not going to make you raise your hands as I did last Sunday uh, to show if you understood or you didn't understand. I'm not going to make you do that. Uh, because. The point is not whether we remember all that was preached. It's not only about agreeing with what was said or even believing and having faith in the truth of what we learn from God's word. It's not just that. The key is how we demonstrate our understanding of that truth in our lives. The key is how we demonstrate the understanding of the truth of God's word that we've learned in our lives. See, there is a responsibility involved when we understand the truth from God's word. There's a responsibility involved when we understand truth from God's word. And that is why James warns us. James 4, 17. He writes there, remember, 
it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it remember it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it leonard ravenhill is correct when he writes today's church wants to be raptured from responsibility so have you understood all these things that's not me asking you about the sermon series that is jesus asking his disciples in our gospel lesson in matthew 13:51 he's asking his disciples have you understood these things see jesus had taught them about the kingdom of heaven through those seven parables and he is now asking those disciples and he is asking us do you understand that god is sowing his word in human hearts and he is looking for fruit do you understand that god is sowing his people his people in the world where they can produce a harvest even though they may be surrounded by ungodly people by weeds do you realize that believers will grow in numbers to permeate and influence the world but that the world will also greatly influence the church do you know that to enter the kingdom we need to make jesus first and love jesus so much that our love for things and for people seems like hatred in comparison and based on that do you see the absolute certainty of the final judgment the separation of people which will be decisive and irrevocable the righteous to eternal life and the wicked to eternal death have you understood all these things now the disciples they say yes yes of course you know it was a wonderful sermon pastor jesus ever heard of the the church members who went to the bishop complaining that their new pastor had used the same sermon four times in a row so the bishop heard them complaining and then he asked them what the sermon was about and the members scratched their heads they hemmed and they hawed but they couldn't remember so the bishop finally said let him use it one time more let him use it one more time we have a responsibility when we understand the truth of jesus words we have a responsibility when we understand the truth of jesus words dietrich bonhoeffer this is what he wrote action springs not from thought but from a readiness for responsibility action springs not from thought but from a readiness for responsibility and to teach his disciples then and us his disciples now about our responsibilities jesus adds this final parable in verse 52 and this is what he says i'm just do this i'm just paraphrasing this it's a literal paraphrase therefore every scribe who has been dis- who has been discipled for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old therefore every scribe who has been discipled for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old now warren wearsby he puts a threefold responsibility from this verse you know he puts it very well so this is how he says it he says firstly we must be scribes who discover the truth secondly we must be disciples who do the truth and thirdly we must be stewards who dispense the truth scribes who discover the truth disciples who do the truth 
and stewards who dispense the truth. Therefore, every scribe who has been discipled for the kingdom of heaven. So we must be scribes who discover the truth. Now, in the gospel narratives, the scribes are Jesus' enemies who opposed him severely. You know, if you, if you read the gospels, you see that uh, in general, there are three major people who are opposing Jesus and who actually even are the cause, uh, the main reasons to murder Jesus. The Pharisees, the scribes, and the leaders, the Sanhedrin leaders. Uh, the scribes are one of the main enemies of Jesus. And in Matthew 23, Jesus condemns the scribes as hypocrites, blind guides, blind fools, whitewashed tombs, serpents, brood of vipers. Why does he use all these, you know, all these terms for them? Because they had become a group of legalistic, self-righteous teachers who only wanted to preserve their traditions and man-made interpretations. And in doing so, they had made the practice of the law of God very burdensome for the people because of their, you know, the, the focus to preserve their traditions and their man-made interpretations. The law, the practice of the law had become very burdensome and cumbersome for the people. But originally, a scribe is, was someone who wrote. That's what we see in the Old Testament, someone who copied scripture. But then, we saw in our Old Testament passage from Nehemiah chapter 8 that Ezra the scribe, he is the scribe who taught and who explained the scripture to the people. We saw that Ezra and some of the other Levites that were there, they went amongst the people who were gathered and they explained the scriptures to the people. They made it understandable for them. Likewise, as scribes, we have a responsibility to learning and studying scripture. We have to focus on discovering the truth from God's word. That should be our focus also. See, before we can explain something to people, we need to know it ourselves. We need to focus on discovering the truth from God's word by learning and studying scripture. And this leads on to the second responsibility, to be disciples who do the truth. Disciples who do the truth. Now James 1.22, James writes over there, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Do what it says. Listen to what Francis Chan, what he, what he writes. Something is wrong when our lives make sense to unbelievers. Something is wrong when our lives make sense to unbelievers. Do you think he's got it wrong? See, yes, we read our Bibles. Yes, we attend church services. Yes, we hear the sermons. And we may, be, we may grumble a little when it's a little longer than we want it to be. But we sit through it, right? That, that counts. And we do all the other Christian things. But if that, if all this hasn't transformed our lifestyle, if it hasn't transformed our thinking, our attitude, our behavior to become more like Jesus, then something is wrong. If our lives make sense to unbelievers, it may mean that we are just like them or that we are too much like the world. See, if they look at us and they see our Christian homes torn with quarreling and fighting and divisions, if they see in our lives, you know, the same things that they struggle with, sexual immorality, 
if they see the same evils and longings and loneliness in our lives as much as theirs, then they are bound to, to tell us, keep your message, keep your Jesus to yourselves. You are no better than me. See, I'm not trying to say that we need to outwardly show that our lives are better than others and compare it to them that, see, my life is better than you. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is an everyday loving relationship with Jesus will definitely transform us and help us to live a victorious life from the inside out. And when the world sees our transformed lives, when they see us genuinely loving one another in the church, that will be the proof to believe that the message that we preach is a genuine message of truth. That Jesus is real. That Jesus is alive. And which brings us to our third responsibility. We must be stewards who dispense the truth. Again, Jesus says in verse 52, Therefore every scribe who has been discipled for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. See, the master of the house or the owner of the house was basically responsible for the welfare of the entire, you know, all the people in the house um, by maintaining the food supply, um, you know, clothing and everything else that was needed by the members of that household. And this master of the house, uh, you know, they kept the supplies in storehouses sometimes, treasures from which they would dispense items as they were needed. New things, old things and new things. Now, when Jesus says that, you know, when he compares that scribe who has been discipled for the kingdom of heaven to be like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old, you know, these disciples of Jesus, they knew the old scriptures. They knew the old scriptures. But what Jesus taught them was to how, you know, was to understand them and to apply them in their lives in a new light. You know, in our Bible study on Tuesdays, we are discovering how Jesus transformed each of those, you know, 12 disciples of his by his teaching. And it's really interesting to see some of their character flaws and how Jesus worked on their lives to transform them by his teaching, by his life itself. That's what Jesus did to his disciples. And then in the end, what did Jesus do? In Matthew 28, 18 to 20, it says, Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Did you hear that? What was the commission to his disciples? Go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. We have the same commission, we have the same responsibility as the disciples to make the gospel known, the good news known to those around us. We have the same responsibility as those disciples to teach others that they may be saved, they can be saved from the fiery furnace of hell for eternity. They can enjoy a loving, relationship with Jesus today. They do not need to be alone. They are not alone. They can enjoy a loving relationship with Jesus. Francis Schaeffer, he writes, each generation of the church in each setting has the responsibility of communicating the gospel in understandable terms, considering the language and thought forms of that setting. Each generation of the church in each setting 
has the responsibility of communicating the gospel in, in understandable terms, considering the language and thought forms of that setting. My dear brothers and sisters, use your setting wherever God has placed you in His perfect will. Use that. Use whatever gifts and talents that He has given you. Maybe it is a place of study, maybe it is your workplace, your business place, maybe it is some talent, maybe your painting, maybe your music, maybe your sport. Use that in the light of the truth of God's word. Use that in the light of your relationship with Jesus to remain fresh in your ministering to, to everyone. In our New Testament reading from 2 Timothy 4, Paul writes, Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Preach the word and if necessary, use words. See, as we discover the truth and as we do as disciples and as we live out that truth in our lives, our lives will become living, leading examples as we lead others to the truth, as we lead others to Jesus. Jesus says, Therefore every scribe who has been discipled for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Brings out. You know the Greek word that is used there for bring out, ekbalo. It carries the idea of sort of casting out, scattering, distributing widely. Heard that sometime back in any of the parables? We heard that in the first parable of the sower, right? The sower does the same. He sows, he just scatters his seed everywhere. We saw that even though the sower knows that a lot of the seed would be wasted in the three types of the soil, it wouldn't bear much fruit. It wouldn't, you know, he couldn't reap a harvest at all there. The sower does not stop sowing. Even though Jesus knew the condition of the heart of the people who are listening to him, he continued to preach to everyone. And he does even now. We also need to generously preach and teach the truth of God whenever God gives us an opportunity as we depend upon Him. Are we like scribes who are focused on discovering the truth from God's Word? Are we like disciples focused on doing, practicing the truth? Are we like stewards who dispense the truth? The vision must be followed by the venture. It's not just about you know, knowing that vision or having that vision. The vision must be followed by the venture. It's not enough to just stare at the steps. We must step up the stairs. Once, have not. Let's close our eyes and bow down our heads. Are we scribes who are focused on discovering the truth? Are we disciples who are focused on doing and practicing the truth? Are we stewards who dispense the truth broadly like that soul? Shall we pray in our hearts? Most gracious God, we thank you that in your grace and in your mercy you have made us your children by sacrificing your best. We thank you, dear God, that you've given us an opportunity to understand the cost of that sacrifice. 
and to make Jesus our treasure. We thank you, dear God, for giving us your word, for us to understand truth, for us to live by your example, for us to live by your standards. Lord, we realize that understanding truth also involves responsibility for us to tell others about it, not just to keep it to ourselves. We pray, O oh God, that just as you challenged your disciples then, that you would continue to challenge us to be scribes who will be focused on discovering the truth from your word. That we would be like the disciples who would be focused on doing and practicing your word. That we would be stewards who would dispense, who would share the truth with everyone through our words, through our lives. Help us, O Master. Help us to fulfill our responsibility. In Jesus' most precious name we ask and we pray. Amen. Let's turn in our hymnals to hymn number 733. 733. We have a story to tell to the nations. We'll sing three stanzas of this. Of course, we're not singing, sorry. Let's hum three stanzas of this hymn. <laughs> rise for the benediction. As people of faith, we gathered for worship. As people of faith, we now return to the world. Go out to share the story of faith, the story of life with the world around you, in word, in deed, in speech and in action. And as you go out to give a living witness, as you go out to testify to God's love, active in this world, go knowing that God goes with you, sharing the laughter and the hopes, the fears and the tears. Go with God. Amen. Amen.